Hi everyone, welcome to Pawpaw's Workshop. Today we got a whole shop project. We're making a sword, we're using the X-Carve, we're using the lathe, and a bunch of other tools in the workshop. Let's get started. I grabbed the piece of maple and went ahead and cut and got my edges smooth on both sides and this is two and five eighths inches wide the other thing that I've done is I went ahead and marked a center line because Lakeshore High is going to be written right through this center section so what I'm going to do is just establish the center point and I'm going to use this right here that is 19 inches so that's going to be nine and a half that's my center right there that's how I'm going to set it up on the X carve where it'll cut right down this center line this being the top this being the bottom This is the overall look of what the sword is going to be. And what I'm going to concentrate on right now is just carving the Lakeshore High. So what I've done is I've set up a separate workpiece. This is how it's set up and I know this is going to be hard to see in the camera. So before I cut that, what I want to be able to do is go over here and darken it for you so you can actually see where this is my X, Y, zero point right here. I'm cutting strictly along the Y axis. We're gonna go ahead and set this back up now at my cut depth of 0.1 inches. I'm going to change this because I am cutting maple. Maple is something that I normally don't cut. And I know it's a harder wood. And I don't want to take a chance on having that bit break. So I'm going to select the hard maple. And I'm going to use the standard cut settings that are already in the machine. For this project, I'm going to be using the 16th inch down cut bit that I have obtained from Inventables website. And going through the checklist, one of the things that I often do, especially on something like this, is I'll go ahead and set the X, Y axis first. So right here at this point is my X, Y axis, and I actually lowered the bit down and moved it exactly in place where I wanted it. Now I'll go ahead and raise the bit, and we'll get the Z probe and zero that. Now you can see I'm starting to carve the Lakeshore High. And it's actually cutting very clean. It's cutting 0.1 inch depth. And it actually is looking more fuzzy in this picture than the actual finished sign looks. It did take a very minimal amount of sanding just to clean up that one edge. But it's doing extremely well. You can see as it's making its final pass that is clearing out and cleaning up the A very, very nicely. That's why I said it takes very minimal sanding to be able to do. My original intent was to be able to use this pocket of these letters to be able to fill with epoxy inlay, but time didn't permit to be able to do that, so I just used a spray paint technique and sprayed it black when it was done. But having shown you a detailed close-up of how it cuts each letter, I did want to give you an overall view of what it looks like cutting along the y-axis from top to bottom. Doing the carving this way, using an x-y axis in the center, I think it's a lot easier to set up and more accurate than trying to use the bottom left-hand corner. Okay, I've got a piece of the mahogany into the lathe 
and this is what I'm going to be using for the handle. I'm going to go ahead and make it round with the roughing gouge. Here I'm just doing the basic layout of where I want the different components in the handle. I went ahead and speeded up the video here so that you could see the process, but I didn't want to bore you with all the little details and the time that it takes to be able to do this. But here I'm just cutting in the detail for the handle itself. And for the most part, I'm using a three-point uh, chisel to be able to do this and had a blast doing it because this is one of the tools that I had made from a previous video. I've gone through all of the grits of the paper and the next thing I want to do is take these lines and go ahead and burn that into it. And I have a little simple tool that I have attached a wire to with just the uh, onto a couple of scrap sticks. You never want to hold on to that just by your fingers because accidents can happen. The finish that I use is just a bottle that I made up of shellac and linseed oil. Okay, I'm going to keep the lathe on the lowest speed. I'm going to slow this down. And you always want to use paper towels when working with the lathe. You do not want to use a regular towel. Now that the finish is done, I think you'll agree that that looks quite nice. And at the slowest speed, I'm just going to go ahead and drill a half inch hole into this. Once the paint had dried on the Lakeshore High, I took it over to the planer and just ran it through, cutting a very, very slight bit off and to expose the Lakeshore High with the painted version. I set the blade on the table saw to 65 degrees. This was so that I could cut the bevel for the sword itself. Now it was time to make the blade of the sword and I had to be able to cut the bevel. My hands are actually staying far away from the blade but if you feel uncomfortable with this process then figure out a different way to be able to do it. I'm very familiar with this table saw and have been doing it for 30, 40 years and I do feel comfortable with this. But again, safety is the most important thing. So please, be safe in your shop. To set this next section up, I just went and grabbed the text and typed in when the day as three separate words and the 10 as a separate item as well. The next thing I wanted to do, I wanted to be able to have this word cover the entire area. And one of the things that you can do is I wanted this letter one inch tall. And if you look over here, the height of it is 1.726. But if you look, that measurement is actually from this top here all the way down. So the only way to be able to do that is I just grabbed another object and made it one inch. And then I could put it next to it and get the measurement that I wanted. The other thing that I wanted to do is I wanted this to be able to fill in this whole space. Well, One of the things I can do with that is select the width and I can select that at three inches and that will make the whole object three inches. Now you notice this changed the height too, and the reason being is I have this on lock, so it changed it proportionately. So I have my height at the 3.306, and let's change that back to the one inch, 
and you can see now it measures again from the top here to the bottom of this area so the letter is not actually three inches. So by bringing this over and setting it next to it, then I can just grab the arrow and change the height and bring that up to be able to match. With this now at three inches wide and the one inch tall letters, that's what I'm looking for. So I can just bring it down and put it in place. I went ahead and speeded up the process. I really didn't think that you needed to see it three more times once was enough. But I went ahead and placed all of the different components where they needed to be at the correct size so that it was ready to carve. As far as the way that I did this, what I did is I just used the pen tool and I was able to just come down here and just cl click on it bring it up to where I wanted, click, and continue all the way around. And that's how I made this outer. And you have the nice little bars that help you guide this. And this only takes just a couple minutes to be able to do. And there you go. That is done. And with, if you wish to modify this, you can come over here to the edit the points and you can do the curve or the square and then you can actually highlight these and move them and do whatever you want to be able to do to be able to adjust it. Now what I did is I took this section right here, moved it over into a different workpiece so that I can cut it. So let's go down and let me show you that. Here's the actual work piece here. So I'm going to take this outer portion, slide it out of the way, bring it to a zero cup depth. And I have this much darker right now so that you can see it. So I'm going to highlight this. I'm going to go ahead and set this now to my cup depth of 0.1 inch. All right, so now we are ready to be able to carve. Went ahead and carved the win the day on a piece of popular. The XY axis is actually located right under the H on the V. And I think this is the easiest way to do it. Once this card was completed, I used the outline, completed that portion, painted it, and then ran it through the planer to be able to clean up the letters. Using a planer was much easier and faster than sanding. And to show you the completed portion with the wind today, just going to take some air, blow this off so that you can see it. I think that it turned out quite nice. Now it's ready to move on to the next step to be able to assemble everything together. To prepare to be able to assemble all the parts of the sword, I'm drilling a half inch hole through this portion as I did with the handle where I drilled a half inch hole. I used a half inch dowel rod to assemble the three components once I had everything drilled and then I sprayed a clear coat over the entire sword. Hi everyone, thank you for watching my video today. If you like the video, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button down below and the little bell next to it so you'll be notified on the different videos that I upload. Also, check out the videos over here to be able to stay up to date on the happenings in my shop. So again, thank you for watching my videos.